Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. So we've got the OtterBox uh, review for you guys today. Now this is an OtterBox uh, specifically for the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 8. I happen to have the iPhone 8 and um, I'd recently got this phone and uh, of course we wanted top protection for this thing because the phone is made entirely out of glass front and back and that can be a scary proposition for glass phones. So we actually needed a really good case for that and uh, we found these otter boxes on Amazon for like about 32 or 33 bucks. Ridiculously cheap. If you buy an otter box defender um, otter box for your phone um, like at the source or Best Buy or even your cell dealer it's going to cost you two to three times as much money which is ridiculous, right? So we went on Amazon and we found these and this is the actual, well, most of the box anyways. Um, so on here they say drop protection, dust protection, scratch protection, triple layer protection, screen protection, well, we'll talk about that, and belt clip holster. Now I used to have a ballistics hardcore case uh, for one of my uh, phones in the past and I love those cases. They are great. They have like five or six layers of protection like you could pretty much use your phone as a frisbee and not hurt it. Um, but I was always against otter boxes because they were extremely expensive to compare to other cases out there that were as good or even better. You know, I mean ballistics hardcore cases I think are actually better but I didn't even consider looking at a ballistic hardcore this time. I thought well the, the, one of the problems with the ballistic hardcores is because of so many layers of protection, they're also very bulky. And otter boxes, um, they're not that bulky, which is nice. Uh, so getting away from the bulk is actually a good thing. Um, and of course, you're looking at price cost as well. You know, the otter box on Amazon is actually quite inexpensive compared to in the stores locally. So it's kind of like, well, might as well go otter box. And otter box. A lot of people I know have them, they swear by them over any other case out there other than Ballistics Hardcore, of course, which is like these, you know, much more, but much more bulkier too. Um, anyways, so you've got this like little release system here um, for the thing and you just lift the tab up and uh, your phone comes out. Now you can also rotate the clip to any direction that you require. Uh, for the phone, which is nice. So it's kind of like, oh, that, that's all right. I, I like that. You know, very good quality, strong belt clip on it as well. You know, I've had these type of clips before on the Ballistic Hardcore, and they do last. They're very durable, and, you know, they take a lot of abuse, which is the main thing. You know, we all abuse our, our phone gear for some reason. Well, I guess it's just a natural thing, right? Um, but I like how it, it, it cradles itself in there, you know. Um, and the locking uh, clip piece is very, it's pretty thick, you know, for, for the little clip thingy. Um, so it's going to be very strong and durable. It's not going to snap on you. And it'll actually clip into the little side pocket of one of the retainer clips that helps hold the case together, just like that. And so you can also put the phone in this way if you want as well. It doesn't matter which direction you put the phone in. It has the same little clippy tab on either way. So whether you're a left-handed person like myself or right-handed, and whichever way you grab your phone, the case is very suitable for that, which is actually quite nice. Um, for the price, you can't beat it. Um, that was amazing. Now, that was Canadian dollars, too. So if you're not used to my channel, you're an American or from some other country. Um, I'm in Canada, so any prices I give you on my channel are all Canadian dollars. Now, let's talk about this whole um, screen protection thing. Well, here's the thing, and you've got to really, um, well, hopefully I can get this point across to everybody, okay? A plastic screen protector, okay, even though it has a little bit of a, you know, bubble here, so it's got some, you know, push down on it. Um, either way, it has a built-in plastic screen protector. That's great for keeping fingerprints off your actual glass. It will not, will not save your glass in a drop. The, the actual case is going to save side impacts. It'll save a back impact, okay? Um, it's not going to save a face plant impact 
if there's rocks in the way. So if you drop it onto asphalt, boom, you're safe. As long as there's no rock that is going to be underneath that that could possibly hit your glass. If there is, your screen is done, okay? So you do actually need a tempered glass glass protector and then put this on, okay? Now, the one thing I don't like about this plastic is the fact that it does stick up. It's not, you know, flush to the phone. Um, so using my fingerprint ID scanner is not as reliable as it was without this plastic. That is a bit of a drawback, but, um, you know, if you use your, your tip of your finger instead of your thumb, you're going to have a much better result. So I, I like to use my thumb because, you know, the idea is you should be able to hold your phone and use your thumb and open your phone. Unfortunately, with that little bit of a gap in there, it makes it a hard time uh, to do that. But if you have your, your, your index finger, which is, you know, you're smaller, um, then you're okay. It, it'll work fine. So it's kind of, you know, something that you have to be aware of for setting up your fingerprint ID scanner for your phone. Um, nowadays, you better have <laughs> passcodes on your phone that are, like, virtually unhackable. Um, the best one is actually fingerprint scanner because then it's your fingerprint. So this way if you happen to lose your phone or misplace it somewhere, somebody picks it up and goes, hey, look, free phone, and they try to get into it. And it's like you get so many tries with the fingerprint, and of course they already know their fingerprint won't match. So they got to try and crack your code. And uh, either way, you know, make sure it's a code that is not going to be something that's easy to crack. All right. Um, and then this way it protects your data. The other thing is you can now wipe your entire phone out remotely from your home computer if you have things uh, hooked into your home computer at home with your phone. You'd be able to do that and then this way they're not going to get into doing anything with your phone other than making phone calls and even that can be stopped as well. Um, about the fast as you can snap your fingers. You just call the carrier and say, hey look, I misplaced or my phone got stolen, can you please cut the cell service to this phone? And then at the same time, you can also remotely re-wipe that phone too at the same time so they can't get any of your stuff. So there is a lot of security nowadays, which is good. However, like I said, this plastic piece is, um, it's going to remove some sensitivity. Um, I have found uh, when I go into, say I want to go into like a program, right? It's like, what am I doing here? It's like, no, I want to launch it. So I got to, you know, ah, there we go. Now I can do it, right? So it does have a little bit of a, you got to get used to how you press on this screen. Um, otherwise, it'll bring other options up. Um, so that is a little bit of a downside to these plastic things, but I'm not going to worry about it too much, um, you know, as long as I can do my thing. Like if I want to make a phone call, for example, um, you know, I got to do the same thing. I just got to hit it at just the right amount of uh, touch on there and, you know, speed, I guess. And uh, it works fine for me almost every time. Because um, otherwise, if I hit my phone thing, it comes up with this menu and it's like, okay, oh, favorites. All right. So, you know, we can do this favorite thing. And so if I want to call just a specific person, I can say, okay, call this person. So that's a feature within the software too, but I don't normally see that if I'm just running this phone without this OtterBox on there. I can just hit that app and do what I need to do. You know, same as Guitar Compass. Um, you know, share app, edit home screen. I don't want to do that, okay? I want to fire up the program. So it's just, just hitting it just right. You get used to it, you know, and that's the big thing. It's, it's something different to get used to. Um, if you can't get used to it, my wife has an otter box she actually picked up for her phone um, at Value Village, and what she did was she just punched that plastic out of there, and she's got a glass protector anyways, which is more than going to protect her phone. And um, But I thought, you know what, this is a brand new um, case, and I'm going to see how well I can handle this plastic thing uh, and how it's working for me. And if I absolutely can't deal with it and can't get used to it enough, then I'll just punch the plastic out. Because as long as you have a tempered glass protecting your main glass uh, on the front, you're not going to have to worry about anything going wrong. I mean, I have literally uh, had a habit of dropping phones, 
Um, it just happens. I don't know why. It just does. But I've also face planted phones, okay, in the gravel driveway. And about nine times out of ten, I pick it up, it's fine. That one time that it did happen, I actually shattered my tempered glass in an area where it got hit. So I peeled it off, and it's like not even a scratch mark, nothing on my main glass. Cool. Go in the house, clean it off, grab my spare glass, throw it on. We keep a collection of spare glasses for our phones because we buy, we buy them cheap enough um, at the dollar store. And um, I'll also tell you right now, too, those tempered glasses at the dollar stores are equally as good as every other glass out there at the same hardness level, okay? And I'm being specific at the same hardness level for a reason because there are other glasses out there that are even harder, some are even weaker. Uh, we tend to stick around the 9H level area and have had zero issues. Um, even my iPad has a 9H hardness screen protector on it, both my iPads do. Um, and I had an iPad, uh, iPad Air 2. I used to have an iPad Air 2 at one time, and it had a um, cheaper glass on it. It was like 10 bucks, and that's about what these ones cost too, 10, 13 dollars. Um, anyways, I had dropped that iPad once, and it face planted. Boom! And I was like, oh, because that's a lot more weight than a phone, you know. It's like I was like, just you know. And so I pick it up and it's like, oh, no problems, perfectly intact, cool. Let's try not to do that again, shall we? Right? So, you know, anyways, they do actually work. They do actually save your device, even the ones from the dollar store. So don't be afraid about buying those ones from the dollar store. What you do have to watch from the dollar store is when it comes to cases. They do have some hard style cases. I bought a case that is uh, very similar in a lot of ways to an OtterBox. Um, for the framing and the final, you know, assembly of the silicone on the outside, blah, blah, blah. Well, that one was fine in the 6 and the 6S, but it will not fit a 7 and it will not fit an 8. There's a minute difference in dimensions between the 7 and the 8 that with a hard styled casing underneath the silicone, the 7 and the 8 will not fit in any of those cases. Because I had one here and I thought, well, I've got a case that's perfectly fine, you know, let's see if it fits, and yep, it was just a minute bit out, and it was not going to fit, and it still had the two ports, which was fine, but it just wouldn't go together, and it was like, great, so um, got another case in the house, so we found another case in the house that was more of a, like one of those rat, um, not a gel case, but you just squish it around and it'll form. And it was able to stretch enough to fit my phone and get me through until my OtterBox came in. And uh, so that did me and kept the phone safe. Because leaving the store with my iPhone 8, we actually put it back in the box and put it in my wife's purse. Um, I wasn't allowed to touch my toy until I got it home because if I had dropped it or if I threw it in my pocket and sat down, I probably would have snapped the phone in half because the phone is made out of all glass, that is something that is a little bit on the scary side, right? So you do have to buy a very, very good quality case uh, for any phone that is made out of glass front and back, especially, of course, iPhones 8s, 10s, and I think, might be wrong, but I think the 11. I'd have to look more into it. Um, but definitely for the 10s, they're glass, and so is the 8s, so it's kind of like, eh, you know. Um, but anyway, otherwise it's a great case. Um, for an otter box, I'm quite happy with it. I like how the ports get very well sealed up. I've got a uh, base charger uh, system where I can just put this into a cradle, and one of the things I am finding a bit of a hassle is because of this tab, i got to kind of hold it back and kind of, you know, like just put it in there. I mean, that's a bit of a problem. But if you're just pulling it back and just popping your cable in there and you're not on a base charger, no big deal, right? Um, so that's not a downside to this at all. Um, side protection for your ringer so you do not accidentally put your ringer on and off. Um, that's nice that that's got a cover slip. And there's plenty of room for even my finger to get in there and turn my ringer on and off because in church, if I bring my phone with me, we have to turn our ringers off, right? And so it's easy for me to get easy access into to the ringer for that. Um, or I can just put the phone on vibrate, whatever. 
Um, but it's nice, and button location is good. Um, everything fits perfectly. Um, and plenty of room at the back for your camera as well. And of course, you get to see your Apple logo on the back of your phone, which I'm not too fussy about. I mean, if, it lit, if the back Apple lit up, I'd be like, hey, that'd be cool to have that port there. Um, otherwise, I could really care less. Um, <coughs> but um, anyways, at least the area is still really well protected either way. Um, but you would have to uh, probably watch that if for some reason it back planted itself and you were on a gravel driveway, you might end up doing damage in here and you could damage your camera. I mean, there's only so much protection cases can offer, so I'm not gonna knock these two areas. I'm just letting you be aware of the fact that, you know, if you're in a gravel driveway area or gravel period and your phone back plants itself into the gravel, if a stone did hit up into this area where the apple is, that could shatter that area or put a nick out of the glass. Something would definitely happen. Um, and of course, your camera only has a certain amount of protection, but the likelihood of that happening, uh, probably about one in 300, maybe. I don't know. Um, it's hard to really say. You have to try it and see what happens, I guess. Um, we're not going to do that, though, just to find out. Um, but anyway, overall, great, love it. Price was perfect uh, for, for 30 some dollars. It was definitely worth the money, definitely worth trying out an OtterBox, and I'm very impressed with the OtterBox. So um, I'm not gonna say OtterBox has won me over forever, um, but what I'm saying is right now, at the time I bought this, the price I got on it from Amazon, yeah, I'm quite happy. And I had the thing in like two days. Like we have Amazon Prime. Uh, for shipping while well, my wife does and uh, we got it in like two days so that's great uh, so it's very quick to get a replacement case because even with the case I did have for it I was still a little paranoid because it didn't offer me a hundred percent coverage on the glass and you know that's a funnier thing too about uh, the iPhones nowadays with any of these glasses because the edges bevel over the glasses um, are very delicate to put on. You've got to be very precise with them, but you're still going to get a bit of that edge around there. So whatever phone case you do have on your iPhone, no matter what, um, make sure that your case can actually overlap that area lip a little bit. The OtterBox does a pretty good job of covering that area for us uh, and having the inside bevels also help protect the area that much more too, etc. So another reason why I'm really liking this OtterBox, it's great. Um, so that's awesome. But um, anyway, so that's what I got. Um, as far as uh, you guys and your lovely star ratings go, um, where am I gonna put this thing at? Well, I'm gonna probably put this thing at, um, well, I can give it a four, four and a half out of five, I think. Um, you know, I don't really see any real downsides other than, you know, minor little areas where, you know, this is, this is the bigger part here. You know, I really don't care if I see the Apple or not. And um, because the phone is glass, if you did get a back plant on gravel, that may be a weak area in here. Uh, if a stone got in there and went ka-chunk, um, that would be the only problem with that. And we don't need to see that Apple. We know we have an Apple iPhone 8 or whatever. We don't need to see the Apple. We're talking on the phone. We're not looking at the Apple. So anyways, so I think that's maybe something that OtterBox should actually remove out of these phones. Unless that Apple lights up, I say remove it. It's useless, okay? It's just, I don't know. But anyway, the camera port is fine. You know, I mean, even if you did drop it on the gravel, the most you're going to do is maybe damage the camera lens at most. And I'm sure that's an easy, cheap repair to be done if something did happen by chance. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's where I sit with this case. And I like it. It's a nice case. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll catch you guys on the next video. See ya.